Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply, and this is The Leather Element. If you've got a good question for us, or a good idea for a leather element, drop it in the comment box below. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So an age-old question we get all the time, can we re-dye leather? Well, yes and no. Now, commonly, folks are asking, can I re-dye my sofa or my love seat or my car seats? We absolutely can, but my best advice here, take these to a professional because it's a lot of work and it has to be done right. But for our projects, can we change the dye color? Well, again, yes and no. I've got a setup back here. Let's see if we can pull this off. We're going to use a deglazer. This is going to strip off our top coat. It's going to pull some of the dye back out with it, but that allows us to come back in with another color of dye and a top coat. Now, I can't say this enough. Deglazer, we have got to have good ventilation with this. In my shop, I've got a fan on one end blowing in, fan on the other blowing out. If you don't have a similar configuration, deglaze outside. This is a very strong odor. Now, big point to re-dyeing. We can only go darker. We cannot go to a lighter color. So right here, I've got five pieces of leather, two standard chrome tans. This is our upholstery leather. It's the vintage cowboy. We're going this route again because it's a standard chrome tan. Right here, another chrome. This is our Lexi. We've got a little bit of the a little bit of gloss on that, but let's see how these two re-dye. Right here, our solstice leather. This is actually a veg tan, but it's pre-dyed, and we've got a nice top coat on that. Let's see what we can do there. And over here, I've just got two pieces of natural veg tan. I've dyed these pro dye light brown, pro dye red. So let's start with our Lexi. And let's just do our best to get as much of that top coat off as we can. And I think I've got as much off of that as I can. We'll look at this because that's a high gloss. We'll see much more difference there. But there we go, very flat. So let's try this. First off, I'm going to do the, cow the vintage cowboy. Then let's jump over here and see, see how big of a difference there is. And that looks good. Okay, like I said, if we want to distress something, deglazer is the way to go. All right, over to our solstice. Let's see what happens here. Now, I am really struggling to get all of the top coat off of this piece. Well, first off, quality tannage. Absolutely. Durability? Yeah, we've got it here. But the problem is, if I don't get all of that top coat off, the dye is going to sit on that. When we wipe that off, it's going to come right off if it doesn't rub off on us later on. And that's our biggest fear here. Okay, so I think I've done that as best I can. So yeah, we can see that. Still got a little bit of gloss to that. But I've done my best to get that top coat off. Let's see what happens. Now over here, say we're working on our projects and we simply need to change the color. I haven't added a top coat here. But I would like to go ahead and clean this leather off. Let's pull some dye out of that and see how these look. And our red. Okay, so we need to give these a little bit of dry time, not but a couple of minutes. In that time, I'm going to reset here. Let's add some dye, see what happens. Let's go with our Pro Dye Walnut. This is a beautiful color. It's a little darker than a medium brown, but let's use the same dye color on all five pieces of leather and see what happens. Now, typically with my veg tan, I'm going to dip dye. In fact, that's what I did here. With the chromes, I really don't feel like that's a good idea, but let's see what happens on our top grain first. Now, with a dauber, I'm just going to add dye to all five pieces. And we've got our piece of Lexi dyed. I feel like I just can't add enough dye to that. It's really not going to help if I do. So let's leave that right where it is. Go over to our vintage cowboy. And we've got our dye on the vintage cowboy. Let's set that aside. Let's jump over here because I'm anxious to see what happens with our solstice. And here, that dye just does not want to wick in. But let's give it some time and see what happens. And over to our last two pieces. 
Let's just hit these with a different color die. And we've got our last piece of veg tan dyed. Now we've got some streaking in here. Well, we could take care of that with a sponge, but at the same time, let's just give these ample dry time. I'm a little worried here, but all told, out and away from trying to change the color, that just means that's a quality leather, quality dye, quality top coat. That's gonna be a durable leather, out and away from trying to change the color. Okay, so let's give those at least two hours dry time, we'll come back, add a top coat, see what happens. With a little dry time, everything actually looks pretty good. I think I'm most surprised by the solstice, but here's the bigger point, what's gonna rub off on us? Yes, we want a pretty color, but if we're gonna re-dye a purse or bag or sofa, rub off, that's the deal breaker. So we're gonna add a top coat to each one of these, see what happens. In fact, I've got a good white rag right there. Let's see what our rub off is. So right here, starting with this, with our upholstery leather. Now, this did not have a strong top coat on it. So how about we do this? Let's just top coat half of this. That way we'll see what happens. But also, we'll compare these three with the original colors. So I'm gonna go with a leather balm. Now, if we want a higher or lower gloss, we can choose a different top coat, but this is one of my all-time favorites. Now, I'm gonna use a fleece rag, because to me, these will take in a lot of the leather balm, and we can cover a much larger area. But let's start on, let's start on this end, and we're just gonna top coat half. Okay, we've got that done, so let's give that about maybe five, ten seconds, let that set, then we're going to buff. Okay, we've given that just a little dry time, I'm just going to use a simple cotton rag, and let's buff this. Now, that took a little bit of buffing, but first off, very little rub off, that surprises me, but at the same time, Actually, that's a pretty piece of leather. Now, let's don't use this as affirmation to go re-dye our sofa or our love seat. Let's get through this and see what the outcome is. So I'm going to do the same thing to the balance of the pieces here. All told, I am actually happy with the way these are coming out. That's actually a beautiful color, oddly enough. That's our red right there, our light brown. We've got a good gloss on that. Yeah, there we go. Now I keep looking at that thinking, oh, we've got streaking in that. Actually, that's the natural marks in the leather. Solstice, I gotta say I'm most surprised by this one. It's a high gloss, it really is, but it's a pretty color. Now on our Lexi, we didn't have a lot of gloss on that to begin with. We've still got that same texture to it but that's a pretty color there. Now, we can see that red coming through, so we've got more of a mahogany there than a brown. I think we could always go with an additional coat of the walnut if we want to. Right here, I gotta say, I think this is my favorite, because right here, where we added our top coat, we can absolutely see the grain in the leather, where over here, it somewhat disappears. Okay, so now I'm gonna reset here. Let's pump a little light in here, get a better look, but also, let's compare these three with the original color. Let's start with our natural veg tan. Well, first off, we've got two pretty colors there. Now, again, dip dye or sponge, that would be much better than our dauber, but that gets us to where we need to be. We've got a good idea. So now, rub off. I'm gonna rub these hard. I'm not gonna go easy here. I wanna know if my product is gonna rub off on somebody. Well, that's pretty good. Actually, almost no rub off whatsoever. I bet we're gonna have the same outcome here but let's give it a try. And again, almost nothing. Okay, over to our solstice. There's our original color. There's our re-dyed color, pretty. So how about rub off here? Almost the same as our natural veg tan. Okay, over to our Lexi. There's our original color. There's our dyed piece. Well, we've got just a little bit of rub off there, but I think simply doing a little more buffing will take care of that. And up to our last, this is our vintage cowboy. There's our original color, and there's our dyed color. So let's try over here. This is the one I'm most excited to see what happens. 
Okay, on that side, we're actually getting a little bit of rub off, but I think that's more coming from our edges. So pretty good on that one, but how about right here? And on that side, we're actually getting a little rub off. So best idea there, let's add a top coat, but that's absolutely beautiful. Now, in all honesty, it is really a case by case basis, which leathers are gonna die and which are not. So let's do this. Let's pick up a little scrap, whatever dye we have in our shop. Let's do some experimenting and see what happens. I'm not sure if this is a lot of help or no help whatsoever, because case by case basis, that really doesn't give us any solid answer for the veg or the chrome tan. But here's a big point. Say we've got a beautiful vintage or antique piece of furniture. Let's let the pros take care of that. But if we have a $2 briefcase or a $5 sofa from a garage sale, well, there's no telling what we may be able to pull off. So on that point, I do hope this is good information. Thanks for taking time to watch The Leather Element. Good luck with your projects.